In the aviation world, this is possibly one of the greatest tales of human survival in a moment of crisis on board a plane. An explosive decompression from within the cockpit blows out the windshield and in doing so pulls the captain outside the plane, being held from being pulled out completely by the flight attendant still holding onto him. This is the story of how a potential disaster was averted on board British Airways Flight 5390. Before we go into detail about the day of Flight 5390, we must talk about the plane itself and the maintenance it underwent a couple of days prior. This plane is the British Aerospace Corporation 111, or BAC 111 for short. This was a 1960s British-built regional jetliner, meant to compete with the likes of the Douglas DC-9. There were over 240 of these planes constructed with different variants of length and capacity. The BAC-111 was manufactured in the United Kingdom, as well as Romania, where a licensing agreement saw production of the 111 take place there. The plane saw moderate success. Airlines in Europe and North America flew the 111 for decades, as well as remaining on the second-hand market for years afterwards. The BAC-111 is very antiquated by modern standards. It is so old that the plane has now been effectively banned from flying in Europe due to noise abatement regulations. The plane is so loud it requires an add-on to the engines to make them quiet enough to fly in this part of the world. However, prior to 2002, these planes could be seen in the skies rather frequently. British Airways operated a total of 42 BAC-111s from the years of 1974 to 1993. British Airways itself was formed in 1974 with the merger of four different airlines, the British Overseas Airways Corporation, British European Airways, Cambrian Airways and Northeast Airlines. Aside from their hub at Heathrow Airport, British Airways have long operated seasonal routes from other British airports, sometimes under a subsidiary airline to British Airways. Despite the BAC-111 being a British-built airliner, this particular plane that flew Flight 5390, registered as Golf Bravo Juliet Romeo Tango, first flew in Germany for an airline based out of Munich. It was passed from airline to airline over the years, starting with a transfer to another German airline, Hapag Lloyd, before being sold to British Caledonian in 1981, with it then being absorbed into the British Airways fleet once BA bought out British Caledonian in 1988. The plane itself had seen a lot of flight hours over thousands of flights. This 111 was named after the Welsh county of South Glamorgan. Just over a day before the flight of 5390, this BAC-111 was taken out of service for some routine maintenance at Birmingham Airport, where it was then scheduled to fly out of following maintenance. Maintenance work is usually done at night to avoid conflict with service times. The plane was parked into a hangar on the southwest side of Birmingham Airport, tail first so that the nose of the plane was facing outwards towards the doors. The mechanic who worked on the plane recalled that it was raining outside, and as such the doors were closed. In the early hours of June 9th on the Saturday between 3am and 5am, work was carried out on the plane, which included replacing the captain's side forward windscreen. In the official report by the Air Accidents Investigation Branch, or AAIB, in the UK, it is noted that the mechanic had not changed a windscreen in over two years, and had only briefly read the maintenance manual that night. Their job that night included fully replacing the windscreen on the captain's side window, the mechanic, however, decides to replace the bolts holding the windscreen in place as well. Many different types of planes use windshields that are bolted from the inside of the plane. The air pressure inside helps to create an airtight seal between the two extremes and air pressure inside and outside the plane. However, on the BAC-111, the windshield is bolted from the outside, so the bolts that are needed to hold the window in place need to be strong enough to withstand this level of stress. There was a parts catalogue available on hand to the mechanic to help them search for the correct bolt that was needed for this job, however the mechanic was quite satisfied with knowing which bolts were needed. Taking one bolt directly from the plane, the mechanic took that bolt to a parts store where they judged by eye the type of bolt that they thought was needed. These bolts are so small that they are not identified with any engravings on them physically. Matching by eye, the mechanic took a set of bolts from the parts store which were just too small to be correctly fitted into the windscreen. Without realising this, the maintenance was still carried out on the plane as intended with the incorrect bolts. 
84 out of a total of 90 of these bolts did not fit correctly into the windscreen. They are just 0.66mm too small in diameter. They were simply too small for the job of holding it in place. At the end of their shift, the maintenance manager signed off on the job and the aircraft waited in the hangar for a whole day before making its way back to the apron to take on passengers for flight 5390 on Sunday, June 10th. 87 passengers and crew will be boarding flight 5390. Their destination? Malaga on the south coast of Spain. Most passengers are looking to get away to the sunny skies for a holiday. Captain Tim Lancaster and First Officer Alistair Atchison will be piloting the BAC-111 on this two and a half hour flight. Both pilots have a combined total of over 17,000 flight hours. First Officer Alistair Atchison has had to travel to work as he is not normally based out of Birmingham. Their flight plan will take them out of Birmingham heading south towards the south coast of Britain west of London. At 8.20am, the 111 plane flying as British Airways Flight 5390 leaves the runway at Birmingham heading south. Air traffic control gives the crew a set of climbing instructions, first to climb to 11,000 feet and then to 23,000 feet. 13 minutes after takeoff, the cabin crew are preparing the cabin for their meal service on board, while in the cockpit, the pilots are settling in for the flight. To get comfortable, they release their harnesses, as they had just switched off the passenger seatbelt sign as well. As a plane climbs, the air pressure outside decreases, while the inside fuselage remains pressurized. When a windscreen is fitted onto a plane, it needs to be able to withstand this change in pressure. However, while passing through 17,300 feet, the windscreen on flight 5390 that had been fitted in the maintenance hangar back in Birmingham blows out. What happens in the following seconds leads to being one of the most unique tales of human survival in aviation history. Captain Tim Lancaster, having just released his harnesses and with the faulty windscreen being on his side, is lifted up out of his seat by the force of the higher air pressure inside the plane escaping outside. You could imagine as his legs in this moment push forward on his control column which disconnects the plane's autopilot and puts it into a rapid descent. He has been blown halfway outside and has been pinned against the skin of the plane. Giving his own account, he recalls seeing the tail and the rear-mounted engines running before going unconscious. Meanwhile, in the cabin, the sudden change in air pressure has meant that the air the passengers breathe has also been sucked out of the plane. The cockpit door has been flown forward and is covering the navigation and radio console, although this was quickly removed and stored in the nearby lavatory. A mist then envelops the inside of the cabin, as not only the extreme differences in air pressure inside and outside the plane, but also the temperature create condensation. Flight attendant Nigel Ogden, before Captain Tim Lancaster is fully blown out of the plane, grabs the captain and with the help of his colleague, fellow cabin crew member Simon Rogers, they hold him from being completely sucked out. This effort allows First Officer Atchison to take full control of the plane. The only damage to the plane itself is the windshield and very minor structural damage, otherwise the engines and control services remain fully functional. First Officer Atchison transmits a Mayday message to ATC, however he has trouble hearing anything on the radios as the sound of the situation makes things almost inaudible. His first plan of action was to get the plane to a lower altitude so that his passengers can safely breathe. He is then able to establish reliable communication with the ground, he is able to contact air traffic control in Bristol and request vectors to the nearest suitable airport, citing London's Gatwick Airport as a preference, as it was an airport that First Officer Atchison was familiar with. However, the nearest airport was actually at Southampton. The airport at Southampton lies near the town of Eastleigh. It is a very small airport with a short, single runway. Once establishing that Southampton was in fact an ideal airport with its runway length, the approach to the airport on runway 02 was initiated. The fear of the captain being pulled from the plane completely is exacerbated by the concern of the possibility of him damaging the rear-mounted engines. Flight attendant Nigel Ogden is fighting exhaustion as he can no longer bear the strength of the plane pulling the captain against him. He is relieved when another member of the crew, Chief Flight Attendant John Hewitt, takes over. Nigel Ogden had developed frostbite to his face, dislocated his shoulder, and had damaged one of his eyes from holding onto the captain. Once Captain Tim Lancaster is secured, 
First Officer Alistair Acheson successfully landed the plane at Southampton with zero fatalities. For 20 minutes, First Officer Alistair Acheson was there flying the plane on his own while his captain was sucked halfway outside of his plane. Captain Tim Lancaster was taken to Southampton General Hospital where he miraculously recovers. His injuries include frostbite, bruising and bone fractures to his arm. He is otherwise stable and even returned to flying as captain for British Airways just five months later. The windshield that had blown out of the plane had been found in Oxfordshire near the town of Chalsea. The plane itself received repair and also returned to service with British Airways where it flew for three more years before being sold on again in 1993. First Officer Alistair Acheson, along with his cabin crew members, were awarded the Queen's Commendation for Valuable Service in the Air Award. Captain Tim Lancaster left British Airways to join the low-cost airline EasyJet in 2003, until he retired five years later in 2008. First Officer Alistair Acheson took a very similar career path, leaving BA and joining his former captain's rival airline, Jet2, where he served on until 2015. British Airways retired the BAC-111 in 1993, and the type has now long since retired from public and commercial use. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching this video, and welcome to the first ever Patreon readout on this series. If you didn't know, I recently launched a Patreon page if you wish to support me further with producing this content. This video did go out to my patrons 48 hours before going live here on YouTube, so if you're interested in getting early access to new videos, along with other benefits like having your name shown here at the end of the video, consider supporting the Patreon, link will be provided in the pinned comment. I am also working on an exclusive video only for patrons, which will be about the Concorde crash which is currently being worked on and may be out in a couple of weeks or so. In the meantime, I would like to thank my patrons for their support, I have two names I need to read out here. Thanks so much to my £5 patron KTP123, and a very big special thanks to my £10 patron Cherub Cherub. I thank you so much for the support, it is greatly appreciated. If you yourself want to be in with having your name on screen or having your name read out on video, be sure to visit my Patreon. Thanks again, have a great day, and Happy New Year.